Hello everybody, welcome to part five of this 1,000 penny hunt. Yeah, at part five already, we had 1,000 pre-decimal pennies in there, and there's still a lot left. So, let's get the camera in the right place, about there. Grab a handful, and let's get on with it. Right, here we go. George the fifth there. Not too bad condition, that one. That's a 1912, that's got an H mint mark on it. H for Heaton, but I do think I've got a better one than that on the board already. To have quite a nice condition, one of that. Uh, let's see, it's a 66, yep, yeah, 1966. Queen Elizabeth II. 1898, so that'll be a Victoria. I think I still need an 1898 for the board down there. I'll have a look at the end of this handful, and there's a halfpenny. And it is a halfpenny, not half penny. It says half penny on it, but nobody said that. Half penny started in 1971. Everybody said halfpenny before that, and I mean everybody. <laughs> There's King Edward the Seventh, 1902. Is that a low tide? Is that a low tide? That is a low tide straight away. First 1902 is a low tide. Uh, let me just show you the ones I've got on the board already, because I think I've already got one. Yeah, there we go. The one I just found is at the top. The other low tide in the middle and the high tide at the bottom. You can see there's much more sea on the high tide one. And that is a common one. So that's two low tides. What I'll do, I'll put them down on the board for now before I forget. And I'll pick the best one out to send for the giveaway. Right, let's carry on. Right, another Edward the Seventh. This time 1909. Looking for a little dot after the N in the word one. But no, nothing in that. It's just a common one. And there's a Victoria. A bit battered. Very battered. 1867. I do need an 1867. Terrible condition. But still, it's a date that's needed. 1928 there. George V. And there we've got a 1964 jersey. One twelfth of a shilling. It's not the best condition, that one, is it? I'll put it down on the board for, for now. 1964. Oh, Elizabeth II. Another Elizabeth II. Another 66. And there's another Edward. 1905 this time. Do have a better one than that. Uh, 1861. Quite common, 1861. Found a few of those in this hunt. Oh, there's another Victoria there. 1863 this time. Uh, sometimes, uh, very rarely, you can see a die number under the 8 and the 6. Could be a 2, 3, 4, 5, even a number 1, probably. But I have made a video on that. Have you got a rare 1863 penny? So you can go and have a look at that. There are other things to look for as well on the 63. But I can see that is just a common one. And there's another Victoria. 1893 this time. Pretty warm there and there. I think it's a date that's needed. There is George the fifth. 1928. Another George the fifth. Oh, 1919. Has that got an H mint mark or a KN would be even better? But no, no mint mark on that one. There's George the sixth. 1945. You can sometimes see a double strike on the nine, but they have to be extremely clean to be able to tell. But I will clean that up and let you know if there is a double strike on it. Um, 1919 again, no mint mark. Uh, what's that? I think that's got to be 1875. Looks like a five at the end there. Now that is a narrow date. You can get narrow and wide dates on the 1875. And thanks to Tony from Herbidaceous to remind me there's no H mark, H mint mark on the narrow date coins. It's only the wide date where you find a, a mint mark. Well, let me go and get a wide date and I'll show you the difference. There we go. You can see how much wider the 1875 date is than the one at the top. And you can find H mint marks on the wide date, 1875. Need an 1875 on the board, so I'll put that down there for now. 
Okay, a few more left in this handful. There's a 1913, a George V. There's a shiny one, is that a 66? Yep, certainly is. 1966, and the last one in the first handful is a 1906, Edward VII. So first of all, I'll have a look and see whether I need any of those for my Whitman albums. Okay, I got the 1867, just 5.4 million of that, but not the best condition. The 1828 had a few dirty marks on it, so let's take that one out of there and replace it with that one, which is a bit better. And for the boards, the 64, that's an upgrade. I've got a 1898, what's this one, 1893. Uh, 1863 up there and a couple for the other side which is this uh, jersey one can go down there I'll sort out the best condition ones and another halfpenny so I can go down there actually there's two parts for the halfpenny isn't there Let's put them all together and I can move that South African one to there People were laughing at my South African accent. See, it sounds exactly like a South African would. They said it sounds Australian. This is my Australian accent. See, completely different. Australia, South Africa. You would think I'm a native to either of those countries if you heard me, wouldn't you? Hope I don't find a Chinese one. Right. Okay. Off we go. So let's do a few shout outs, people that have bought me a beer. Sue, thank you very much for buying me a beer. We've got Garrett, thank you very much indeed Garrett, much appreciated. We've got Edward, thank you much uh, Edward. That's Eddie the Gooner, thank you very much for the beer Eddie. Got some new members I haven't going to shout out to yet. We've got Michael McGee, thank you very much Michael. There's Daniel Frew, thanks for becoming a member Daniel. And Bottle Cap Dave, thanks very much Dave. And we've got a super chat from Anne. Thank you very much Anne, much appreciated. There we are. If you want to buy me a beer, become a member, send a super thanks, I'll give you a shout out. Right, let's carry on. Okay, we've got Edward the Seventh. A little bit of a funny mark on his cheek there. Uh, 1908 is an old one. 1862, I think that's going to be one we need. In Victoria, very worn. Can't read any of the writing on that side. In fact, the date's the only thing that's readable. All right, Elizabeth. Oh, it's an Australian one. Australian, Bonza coin. No, that's enough of the accents now. 1964, what was the other one? 1951, wasn't it? So it's a 51 and a 64. And is that a dot after the word penny? So I think that's Perth Mint, isn't it? Nice. Uh, 1914, George V. And there is a 1905, so that will be a King Edward VII. 1910, another Edward VII. There's Victoria, 1878, oh, 1878, I think that's what we need. Again, actually the date, we can read a little bit more on the uh, obverse one, not much. There's Edward VII again. Another 1905. And now we've got 1937. George the Sixth. Uh, what's this? Oh, 66. Not too good. Usually better condition than that. 66s. And what's that? So 1882. Yeah, 1882 see whether there's a mint mark there or not now I'm going to assume that is an H mint mark on there it would be very rare if it didn't have a mint mark on an 1882 penny 1928 George V 1890 so that'll be a Victoria do need an 1890 for the board down there can't remember if I need one for the album I'll have a look oh there's a foreign one Carlos the first is that Portugal 1891 and now I'm not gonna do a Portuguese accent <laughs> 20 Rees 20 Rees bit worn on that side well it's a definitely another new country Portugal 1891 that feels heavy as well the same size 
be a bit thicker, although that is a worn coin. Let me try it with a let's try it with that one. Yeah, I think it is a bit thicker. It does feel heavier. Yep, right, that's one for the giveaway. I looked at that one, didn't I? 28. And that's the 1890 I looked at as well. Right, 1964. Another warm one. Looks like a looks like an 80, 1885, I think that is. Very hard to see, but I think that's a five, isn't it? Yep, 1885. That's another new date. 1939. King George VI. 1906. There's a 1919, and that's got an H mint mark on it. 1918 H, but terrible condition. Oh, big hole in his head there. Mm, bit of damage, bit of corrosion. Not the best, but do need one. I think I need one for the book. 80, oh, sorry, 1966. Another Elizabeth. Uh, what's this? 1964. His hands are getting a bit full now. Right, juggling about a bit. Right. 1966. Some 65. 1965. We've got good condition 65 and 66. 1886. Might be another one. For the board, I think I've got that in the book. 1929, our last one in this handful, there was a lot in that handful, is a 1949. Okay, let's put this um, 1918 with the H mint mark in there. Not very good condition. Let's just hope we can improve on that. Now that mintage figure there is for both the KN and the H. I'll put the H mintage figure down there. There we go. The 1862, very slight upgrade. You can just see the ship on this one. We can't on that, so I'll upgrade that. Let's take that one over there. Put that one in there. Now, 1878, 2.7 million of that one. So that's quite a low minted one. So it's not too bad. Uh, there's the 1882 with the H mint mark. It would be extremely rare if it didn't have an H mint mark on it, so I'm pretty sure that mark is the H. There's the 1890, a 15.3 million of that one. And the 1885, I'm pretty sure that is an 1885, can go in there. 7.1 million of that. So I'm sure that is a five, yeah. Okay, 1886 for the board and 1862 which I've upgraded in my album very very slightly uh, we've got the other Australian one there from 1964 and this 20 rees from Portugal I'll start a new column up there okay here we go. Oh, too many there Okay, we have 1902, and you can see there, that's a common high tide. See the height of the tide there? That's the common one. We have got a couple of low tides, though. Okay, 1965. There's a Victoria. 1877. Is that one we're looking for? It is, yep. Yeah. 1877. Not the best, but it's another date. There's George V. 1917, 1928, and uh, we've got a 1908 there. What have I got there? Stamp myself with the pennies. Right, there's a Victoria. Well, that's an 1877. Just found one of those, didn't we? Ah. It's a little bit corroded, but it's got more detail, if you know what I mean. Looks like it's probably been underground in water or something. Let's check that date. It's 1877. Yep. Well, that's two 1877s in this handful. Uh, there's an 1896. Look how terrible that is. Terrible condition for 1896s. Um, 
1891. Victoria, do we need an 1891? Don't think so. Uh, 1948. Well, there's a dirty one. There is a dirty one. That's really one of the first dirty coins I've found for a long time. And there's the dirty mug. So I'm going to give all these coins away, this time when the mug is full. Anybody who wants to clean them up, I don't like cleaning coins. That's uh, Macamula. If you haven't subscribed to Macamula, link will be below. And let's carry on. 1964. There's a Victoria. 1898. We've got a better one than that though. Uh, 1911. Is that the Gobi X, the hollow neck at the back of the king's head? As you can see, it's not. Oh, it's just a common one. Oh, there's a halfpenny. The Golden Hind, 1939, so that would be George VI. There he is. Charles's granddad. Uh, 1964. Oh, there's an Irish one. An Irish penny. 1966. That's not a bad one. I don't think we found a 66 yet. Oh, there's a farthing. But it's because we're getting down to the bottom of the box. Well, <laughs> probably not yet, but... 1944 and another George the Six. That's a Wren. There's a Victoria. This time we've got an 1898. That's better than the other 1998 uh, I just found. That actually might be an upgrade. Uh, we got here 1946. Has he got a little dot, a little dash after the E? It hasn't. No, it has a common one. Right, what we got here in 1895, we're looking for the small, the sorry, the large gap between the trident and the P, but that's just a small gap. Ah, that reminds me, in the last video, video number four, I found this, a strange hole with a rim around it, and it's the rim bit that is confusing. There's a close-up of it there. Some people said it could have been done with a pin punch. Someone's punched a hole in it, raised the metal up either side when the coin was relatively new. And over the years, it's sort of worn down to look like a rim. But I don't know. Probably never know. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, 1901, Victoria. I don't think we've got a 1901. I did find a couple, but they were such terrible condition. I didn't even put them down. So that is the first 1901. It's not too bad. 66. Oh, 63. That's a not bad for a 63. That's definitely an upgrade. Well, that's quite good for 63. It's very good for 63. Definitely an upgrade. George VI. And last one in this handful is a 1934. That's not a bad condition either. Okay then, the 1963, I'll take that out of there because this one is definitely an upgrade. That can go in there. And while I'm on that page, there's quite a nice obverse on this one, 66. 66? Yep, so I'll put that one in there. Got a 1901 at last. 22.2 million, so not particularly scarce. The 1877, I got two, so this one, although it's got a bit of corrosion on it, it's got quite good detail, so I'll put that in there, 9.6 million of that one made. And for the giveaway board, this 1834 can come off there, because that's a bit of an upgrade. Um, 1896, terrible condition, hope we find a better one than that. Now I've got this 1895, can go down there. Another Victoria, what was that? Oh yeah, 1877. Two of those, aren't we? There we go. We'll go there. So now we've got another Irish, 1966. A halfpenny. What was that? 1959, wasn't it? There. And the first farthing out of the box. Well, I'll have to go there. If you haven't seen these videos before and you don't know what to do to win all this lot, uh, I'm making videos. There's a thousand pennies. It's usually around eight or nine videos. And then what I do, I'll pick one of those videos at random, and then I will pick a comment from that video at random, and the person who made that comment will win everything down here. All you've got to do is be subscribed, click the like button, so don't forget to comment on all the videos. Okay, let's do another handful, shall we? Okay, 
Okay, let's go. It's a 1964. And there's a 1945. I do check the nines, see if they're double struck, but you can't really see. I'll let you know if I do find any. Uh, there's a 63. There's a terrible condition, a 1919. And there's. I don't think there's a mint mark there, is it? No, no mint mark. There's a Victoria, 1893. We do have one down there, but this one could be slightly better. I'll have a look. Uh, right, what we got here? 1964 again. There's a 1916. Is that going to be a recessed here? No, it isn't. Look, look at the quality of that, though. For a 1916. It is a recessed ear. I can't really see, but I can feel that the king's ear is the same level. It's not been recessed in there or anything. And you can always tell what one of the tooth will be broken up there, but there isn't any broken teeth. Look at the quality of that for 1916. Let me get that 1916 from down here. Show that's the quality of a 1916 you normally find. Look at it. That's going to be worth five or six pounds, probably even more in that condition. They're very hard to find in that condition. That's amazing. A little bit of damage up there, but nothing to worry about. That's a beauty. That's an upgrade for me. Let me put that down there for a minute. Right, another George V, this time a 1918. There's no mint mark there, is there? No. Nope. Victoria. Oh, another 1901. There you go. So that's one for the board. Uh, what's this? 1914. 1926. For the 1926, you're looking for what is called a modified effigy. And you can't really tell the, whether the effigy has been modified unless you've got a virtually uncirculated coin. But there is another way of telling. Look at the GAR. Sorry, the G R A, get it right, and the word Brit and the colon in the middle is more or less central between the A and the B. So let me get you a modified effigy one and I'll show you the difference. There we are, the one underneath and on the bottom is the modified effigy, and you can see the colon is almost touching the A. There's a clear gap between the colon on the B, and what the top is the one I just found, and the colon's pretty much central. That's the easiest way to tell. I have made a video, the link will be in the description, have you got a rare 1926 penny? So there are other little things to look for, but this one's just a common one, but we haven't found a 26 yet, that's the first one. 1860, there's lots of different variants of the 1860, but in this condition, basically you're just using it as a date run. And um, we haven't got an 1860 for the board, I found one from a book, but that's not going to be an upgrade. 1922, look at the the um, trident, and if the middle prong is not touching one of those beads, you've got a very rare coin indeed, but as you can see, it's touching the middle bead, middle, pr middle prong is touching the bead, so that's a common one. 1945, uh, 1898, that might be a little bit better than the 1898 down there. I'll have a look in a minute. 65. Oh dear. That's just not a dirty coin, is it? That is an absolutely filthy coin. That's going in the mug. I've temporarily emptied the mug because a lot of people like to hear the noise it makes. There you go. Only a few more left. 1964 again. 1962. That's George V, 1921, Victoria, 1896, again, much better. Oh, and a French one, look at that, the last one, French. That's, that's 10 centimes, obviously, isn't it? Yeah, 10 centimes. 1916, that's not too bad. A little bit more worn than others we found, but that side's not bad. All right, 
that's the very last one in this hunt, but let's get them down there. All right, for the book, that 1916 is going to be upgraded with this beauty. I think this is my favourite find so far. You do not find 1916s in that condition. What a lovely coin. There's the 1926, that's the first one of those. Nearly four and a half million. And for the board, we got a 1901. Now there's a few upgrades there. 1893, that's definitely better. Uh, what was this one? 1898, which is that. That's better. 1896, slightly better. And then we've got the 1860 up there. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the like button, that really helps. Don't forget to subscribe and comment on the videos. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, the French one, I shouldn't forget that.